Hey, this is Shane Reed. Welcome to CVN's Trial Techniques Spotlight. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a trial consultant, and I want to share with you some great things that I saw Arash Hamanpour do at trial that you can do also in the next trial you have. And this is what great trial lawyers do. They look for ways to undercut the expert's opinion. And one way is to attack how much they work for one side or the other. And another way is simply to try and get them to support your own case. So let me give you a little context of what happened here. Rosh Hamanpour is representing the family of a person who crossed uh, the street at the city of Glendale's uh, crosswalk. The problem was there was no markings on the crosswalk. So he was killed by a motorist going about 40 miles or more and uh, miles per hour or more. And what Arash Hamanpour was alleging was the city of Glendale should have made the crosswalk safer through signage, markings, and any number of things to alert drivers that there were pedestrians ahead. And so now let's look at this video. We have the defense expert on the stand and Arash Hamanpour does a couple things that are really good. He asked him how many times he's worked for the defense, and you'll hear that percentage, and it's pretty high. And then secondly, he uses a past case that the expert has worked on because Arash has done the research, he's prepared, and he uses that prior case to help support his own case by saying, you know what, if you found there was liability in that case, why are you in this case saying that there's no liability. So watch what happens and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Do you recall that's the report from the city? Yes. And it's um, City of Glendale Traffic Engineering Division, correct? Yes. And they gave us a report from uh, July 2018 to June 2019, correct? Yes. And it should have had our incident but doesn't have our incident, correct? Correct. Okay, now, you testified approximately as of 2021, 93% for the defense when you testified at deposition or at trial, correct? I believe that's true. Okay. Okay. Now, in that case, Caltrans had a concrete divider on the I-15 freeway in San Diego Yes. that for two years did not have protection at the end of the concrete divider. And in that case, we're hired by the injured party, is that correct? Yes. And you testified you felt the end of that concrete treatment should have had something on it to prevent death or serious harm if someone hit the end of it, correct? Yes. Okay, now, in that case, the injured party was a dead man's family. He was driving, he fell asleep, and he hit the edge of the unprotected concrete meat, correct? It was a she. She, excuse me, is that correct? It was a she, yes. Okay. Well, I, it's disputed whether they were asleep, but I accepted they probably were. Okay. And so, in that case, your opinion was, to the public entity, the event was foreseeable. Someone, even if they're driving negligently, may fall asleep, veer off the road on the freeway, and hit the edge of that unprotected k rail, correct? Yes. And your opinion was that, uh, let's check it. And in that case, the driver who lost control was not acting with due care. Do you agree? Probably they were not. And even though the driver was not acting with due care, you still felt it was an unreasonable or unsafe condition, correct? I felt it was unreasonable for the K-Rail to not have an attenuator on the end. I love that clip for several reasons. At first, Arash Hamanpour gets the defendant to admit that this accident should be in the system of Glendale, but it's not. And therefore that the city doesn't keep good records of incidents and accidents, and it should. Secondly, he gets the defendant to admit that he's worked for the defense 93% of the time. Arash is trying to show that this expert, as nice as guy as he may be, that he is slanting his testimony for the defense simply by the fact that he works for the defense most of the time. So that's what he wants to suggest to the jury. And then the third thing, which I thought was just brilliant, he uses one of these experts past investigations where he's actually testified for the plaintiff 
and tries to show the jury that, you know what, those facts were really bad. In that case, a driver fell asleep at the wheel, wheel and you found that the public entity in that case should have anticipated that drivers might fall asleep at the wheel at night and should have had a longer extender of this concrete barrier. So his point is, if you believe that in such a case, then why in this case are you suggesting that the city of Glendale should not have had signage, lighting, and marking on the road to alert motorists of the potential of pedestrians ahead? And in this case, Rosh Hamanpur, in his opening statement, had a beautiful picture of this uh, walkway that really didn't exist. It was just a little cut through in the median, no painting, no signage, but pedestrians thought they could cross there because there was a concrete path on the median connecting one side of the sidewalk to the other side of the street. But there was no signage. And you know what? This accident took place at nighttime. There was no way motorists could anticipate pedestrians were crossing where the city of Glendale had invited them to do so. That's what great trial lawyers do. That's what Arash Hamanpour executed here so well. He undercut the expert's testimony, used the expert to support his case, and that's how you win. Hey, I look forward to seeing you next time on CVN's Trial Technique Spotlight. I'll see you then.